another example of reflection where we have two mirrors. The two mirrors are going to meet at a right angle. I'll show you the drawing down below in just a minute. Uh, we have a ray coming in to this system, ray A. It hits the first mirror a certain distance away from the uh, corner where the second mirror is attached at right angles. And it has some angle theta. I'm not going to use a number of degrees, just say some general angle theta. And that's away from the normal. So it's going to reflect from the first mirror. It's going to bounce over and hit the second mirror. And then ray B is the ray leaving the second mirror. And we're interested. What's the orientation of ray B compared to ray A? So let's see how this uh, picture aligns itself. So we have ray A is coming into our system here. Some angle theta away from the normal. And we want to uh, investigate the relationship of the direction of ray A and the direction of ray B. The drawing is semi-accurate, gives you a little clue. Uh, but we're, one way to uh, think about this is what's the angle down here to the mirror? And then if you would notice, if we have a right angle here and the normal for the second mirror is also at a right angle, of course, to the mirror. Um, we might be interested, these, ray, these lines are parallel. This first mirror, mirror number one, and the normal to mirror number two, these two lines are parallel to each other. So what's the relationship of the angle here and the angle up here? That will tell us the orientation of ray B compared to ray A. Well, when we do reflection, of course, theta i equals theta r. The incident angle away from the normal is equal to the reflected angle. So over on this side of this first normal, I will also have theta. Now, these normals, if I would have drawn this a little bit longer, what is the angle in between the normal for mirror number one and the normal for mirror number two? Again, the normal is constructed aligned perpendicular to the mirror at the point where the ray hits the mirror. So I've got that point here. The second normal is drawn perpendicular to mirror two, starting at that point. The mirrors are perpendicular. Each normal is perpendicular to its mirror. So in fact, there will be a 90 degree angle out here. So if I have uh, a right angle, I have a triangle, a right triangle, I have theta here, just right here, I'm going to have 90 minus theta. And now we have another reflection taking place. This ray uh, traveling from mirror 1 to mirror 2 has an angle of 90 minus theta with respect to this normal. Again, incoming angle equals outgoing angle. So this is 90 minus theta, the angle of ray B away from its normal. What's the angle down here? Well, the normal is 90 degrees away from its mirror. So if there's theta up here, down here is 90 minus theta. So if I would put numbers on this, if this incoming uh, ray is 50 degrees away from the normal, this angle would be 40 degrees. Over here, again, theta is 50 degrees. I have 40 degrees for ray number B, letter B, um, moving away from its normal. The normal for mirror number two and mirror number one are parallel lines. So I have the same angle for the uh, ray related to this horizontal line. And what is happening here is the certain light source very far away shines in here. The ray hits this system, and the light comes back towards the source. The light comes back towards the source. And what we've constructed here is called a corner reflector. A corner reflector. A couple of applications. Just There are more than I've listed here. But uh, perhaps when you were younger or even now, it's it's good to ride a bicycle, conserve energy, fossil fuels. Uh, but you may have something on the spokes of the wheel, a little plastic, uh, very thin uh, attachment. It, underneath the plastic cover, there are lots of corners. 
corner mirrors and it's actually more of a corner of a cube instead of just uh, two-dimensional and as light from uh, a car approaching sideways to a bicycle the the car is perhaps headed north the bicycle is headed east in front of the car the driver of the car will be able to see the light reflected by the corner reflector on the spokes of the bicycle and slow down another astronomy application is that there are I think five sets of corner reflectors banks of corner reflectors on the moon three left for the Apollo landings and two left on the top of uh, Soviet Union landers that soft landed on the moon and these are still being used installed there in the 19 late 1960s 1970s and now being used to determine the distance to the moon so astronomers send in send to the moon laser light it hits this bank of corner reflectors on the moon that laser light is comes back towards the telescope where the laser was uh, uh, directed towards the moon and astronomers measure the amount of time for the light to return we know the speed of light we measure about the amount of time for the light to return and astronomers can calculate the distance this time is I think about two and a half seconds is the time delay for a beam of light to leave the Earth, hit the Moon, and come back to the Earth. Um, but the distance to the Moon is known, I think it's within a centimeter. Astronomers are keeping track of the distance to the Moon. And that distance is increasing each year. Um, so I'll leave you to uh, research that more if you would like. It's, it's not a surprising result. The astronomers knew that was happening before this system, but now there's an accurate measurement. Uh, using the principle of the corner reflector, the ray that comes in bounces off of the system back in the direction towards the source of the light. The corner reflector. Using the principles of reflection and a little geometry, we've uh, shown that to be the case. Keep practicing.